Hello everyone, this is part three, the final chapter in the Sergeant Cuddles one pound ant weight combat robot build. And in this part, we're gonna take everything apart and show you all the electronics that make this thing tick. The electronics for ant weights and most other combat robots for that matter are pretty simple. There's really just a few major components that you connect together there's no programming involved, and it's just a lot of basic soldering or basic electronics work. I'm gonna split this video into kind of three or four major parts. I'm gonna start with the control aspect, you know, which is the radio and the receiver, then the power side of it, the battery and the power switch and everything else, and then finally the motor controllers and the motor themselves. So let's dive right in and start talking about the RC transmitter. This is a Turnigy 9X transmitter. The transmitter is kind of the heart of your system. It's what you actually use to control the robot. You have these nice little joysticks, you have a bunch of buttons, and you have an antenna. Mine here is on the back. And there's really, you know, not that much to it. They come in a lot of different flavors. This is kind of um, maybe a mid to mid high end one, I guess. Um, the simpler ones have a lot less channels, and I'll talk about what all the different channels mean. This one's also programmable, meaning I can sync it up to several different receivers and have kind of different modes going on for each one of the receivers I have it plugged into <laughs> for different robots and whatnot. But really when it comes down to it, you have a couple of joysticks, um, a couple of buttons, a couple of knobs, and those transmit to the receiver, tell it to do various things, and that in turn controls your motors, servos, or whatever else you have. In front of me, I've got all these various bits, and I'm going to hook them together to form a really simple control circuit that uses the transmitter to control this servo. The first thing we need to do is get some power to the receiver, and I've got just a really simple wall wart plugged in right now. This just outputs five volts. All of these guys want to see five volts, and we'll talk about that later in the battery section. And I'm just going to use this little barrel jack adapter to plug in. Now I have my um, five volts and ground, and I'm going to plug it into this little guy. And usually the ground goes on the bottom, the power goes in the middle, and the signal goes on the other side just like that. So if I plug this in with the red wire down, this will now give power to the receiver. You can see the lights on, and if I send a command with the radio, it will control something. So the next step is to hook up the servo, and then we can start using the joysticks on here to control the servo. And let's see, here we go. So it's controlling with this input. And it's as simple as that. That is the most basic configuration for controlling something for an ant weight. If you were going to use a flipper, this would be the entirety of your weapon system. You would simply have a servo connected directly into here, and then this would be connected directly to your battery. It's as simple as that. Now that we have all the RC control stuff out of the way, it's time to talk about power. For the power system, we're going to talk about two main components. I'm going to talk about the battery, and then I'm going to talk about the power switch, and that's how power gets to everything. In the previous video and um, earlier in this video, I talked about the receiver and how it wants 5 volts. Now, you're probably going to be using a higher voltage than 5 volts in your system. A single cell LiPo is 3.7 volts or 4.2 charged, and that's actually slightly below the five volts that your receiver wants. But your weapon and your drive motors, you're probably gonna to wanna to run those much higher than the 3.7 to 4.2. You're probably gonna to want to run them in like the 12 volt or maybe even higher range. The higher the voltage, the faster the speed. So not only is your weapon motor gonna spin a little bit faster, but your drive motors are gonna spin a little faster. And in a one pound or a three pound nat weight or beetle weight respectively, you really don't have that much room or weight to do two separate battery systems. So you're not going to do like a 5 volt battery just for the receiver side and then maybe a 12 volt battery for the drive and then maybe a higher voltage for the weapon. You're probably going to have just one battery. So what you need to concern yourself with is what's called a BEC or battery eliminator circuit. A lot of drive ESCs have a battery eliminator circuit built in. I'm using this tiny ESC from Fingertech Robotics, and it has that built in. A battery 
eliminator circuit essentially means that when you feed this with its input voltage, I think this can handle up to 20 volts, let's say, it will actually output along this pin a 5 volt signal for your receiver. So when you plug this into the receiver and power this with your battery, it automatically sends a good 5 volts into this, so you don't need to worry about that. As far as turning the power on and off on your robot, the controller does have a lot of safety features on it. You can actually set kind of the default off state so that when you turn off the radio, everything else on the robot turns off. However, you don't want to completely open up the thing just to disconnect the battery, and that's kind of against the rules. You need some sort of external power switch. So how it's done in combat robots is um, a little switch like this. This is another switch from Fingertech Robotics, and I have one installed right here on Sergeant Cuddles. The way these are different than a standard power switch is you have a combat robot, it's fighting against thing, it's getting hit, it's getting knocked around. A little slide switch or a toggle switch could get hit during the fight, and the worst thing that you want is to get hit, and then the whole thing turns off. So we use something like this, which um, is essentially two little fork terminals that you screw a screw down through, and that's what makes the contacts. So to turn on Sergeant Cuddles, I use this hex key, and that's what turns him on, and that's what turns him off. So you actually tighten down the screw, and your chances of it coming loose or turning off during combat are very, very low. Choosing the battery for an ant weight is relatively simple. You have two factors to take into consideration. You have the voltage and you have the capacity. The voltage is based on how many cells the battery is. This is a three cell battery, so three times 3.7 is 11.1 .1, or 12 volts fully charged. The voltage is going to determine how fast the motors spin based on either the KV rating or just the rating of the motor itself. So the more volts you have, the faster the motor spin. In terms of capacity, you want to pick a battery that has the right capacity for, you know, your combat robot. You're going to do this by basing it on the maximum current draw that you're going to have. For me, it is the weapon motor. The weapon motor is a 102 watt motor. So if we take 102, divide it into the voltage coming out of the battery, which is 11, we get roughly 10 amps or 9.2 or something like that. That is going to determine how much current I need to provide that system overall. The matches are only about three minutes, so if I take three, divide into 60, that's 0.05 hours. So I now have 10 amps that I need to provide for 0.05 hours, and if I do that little math, it comes out to about 500 milliamp hours. So this can do a half an amp for one hour, or blah, blah, blah. If you scale it down, it can do 10 amps for about three minutes. So that is the maximum that my weapon motor can do. And granted, it might spike a little higher and it might dip a lot lower, but that's going to be a good guarantee that this battery will have the right capacity for the whole match. Finally, the last thing to talk about is the speed controllers. The speed controllers are the link between the battery, the controller, and the motor itself. They take an input from the receiver, which comes from the transmitter, and then it tells the motor essentially how fast to spin. Uh, this is one of the speed controllers I'm using. This is for the weapon. There are three total speed controllers inside of Sergeant Cuddles. I have one for the weapon, and I have two of these, one for each one of the drive motors. And so, as we remember from earlier in the video, I have one input, two input, and then the throttle is the third input for the weapon motor. When we hooked up the servo to the you know, whole receiver combo thing earlier, I showed you that it essentially controls the servo's position based on where the joystick is. That is really not that different from how the speed controllers work. If I have the position all the way down at zero, the motor spins at zero RPM, and as I go all the way up to max, it spins at max RPM. So we can see this in a simple demonstration of a motor connected to a speed controller connected to a single channel input from the receiver, and we can see that that is how you control the speed of the motor. The drive motors do not really work all that differently from that, except for that we have some kind of internal mixing going on, so that when I hit up, both motors go up, when I hit back, they both go back, but then when I hit left and right, they go at different speeds to effectively do the turning. 
So that's pretty much all that happens with the speed controllers. They connect in much the same way that the servo does. And as we talked about earlier with the battery eliminator circuit, you just have to make sure that you know, the receiver is properly powered, but these are pretty easy to use as well. These are all the components that go into Sergeant Cuddle's electrical system. We have the battery, we have the receiver, one of the drive motors, the weapon motor, the drive ESC, the power switch, and then the weapon ESC. And how all this connects together is the battery feeds power into the on and off switch. That in turn feeds power into both of the drive motor ESCs and into the weapon ESC. And of course, as we talked about earlier, this powers the receiver with the battery limiter circuit that's built into that. And then we have the drive motors that connect to each one of those, and then the weapon motor which connects into that. So this comprises all of the electronics that are inside Sergeant Cuddles. This concludes the three-part video series for Sergeant Cuddles, my one-pound combat robot. This is most likely not going to be my last combat robot. I've actually already started on a three pound combat robot for a competition coming up in October. So stay tuned for more details on that and go ahead and subscribe to the channel if that's what you're into.